Hey, what's up, girlfriend? We are going to have a ton of fun. But first things first, there's a few things you should know about me so that I can be the best I can be for you. Let's start with my lady parts. I mean, well, you know what I mean. Just how you have arms and legs that aren't called sticky things that come out of your body, I have descriptions for all my parts too. I have a band, case, bezel, dial, subdials, hands, date window, crowns, and buttons. The easiest way to tell a crown from a button is whether or not it has grooves on it. If it has grooves, then it's a crown and its purpose is to rotate. If it's smooth, then it's a button and its purpose is to be pushed. I always reference everything from my face in terms of 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. First things first, I will be your time teller. To set my clock, pull out the crown at the 3 o'clock position so that it clicks twice. Rotate the crown until the current time is shown by the hands on the face. Notice the subdial at the 3 o'clock position. That's my 24-hour military function. It is divided into 24 hours. So when you are setting the time, make sure to reference that so that your watch is displaying the correct time. For example, if you're setting the time at 10 a.m., the subdial should point to the number 10 located at about 5.30 on its face. But if you're setting the time at 10 p.m., the subdial should point to the number 22 located at about 11 p.m. on the subdial face. If you see that I'm changing the date at noon, then it means my 24-hour subdial is set to midnight instead of noon. Even though your watch shows 12 o'clock, pull out the crown and rotate the hands all the way around until it reads 12 o'clock again, making sure that the subdial reads 12 o'clock as well. Okay. Now that the local time is set, let's set the date. Push the crown in one click. Rotate it clockwise and see the date change in the small box at 4 o'clock. Keep going until you have the date set. Push the crown in once you're done. Keep in mind, my second hand doesn't move even though my time is ticking. It's okay if you don't see the second hand moving. The only time you should see my second hand moving is when you start or reset the stopwatch function, which I'll go over in a minute. Another side note, sometimes you'll see my second hand resting somewhere other than at the 12 o'clock position. It's a simple fix. Just pull the three o'clock crown out two clicks and push my top button. With each push, the second hand will move over one second. If you hold the top button down, I will wonder what you're doing for a moment. And then I'll realize you want to move the second hand faster. And I'll begin moving the second hand around the watch quickly. Line my second hand back up to the 12, or anywhere else you'd like it to be, and then just push the crown back in. I am able to time anything up to an hour. My chronograph, or simply a stopwatch, is super easy to work. You can always tell a watch has a timer function if it has buttons on the side of the case. The top button is the start stop button, and the bottom button is the reset button. For my timer, the second hand counts the seconds, and the minutes are tracked at the subdial at 9 o'clock. To start my timer, press the top button at the 2 o'clock position. Press it again to stop it. And to reset, press the bottom button. You will see both the second hand and the left subdial return to their original positions. My favorite quality is my eight memory aid. Notice the alphabet around the bezel? Add that to the crown at six o'clock and the word eight that's printed between six and seven o'clock and you have the patent pending method to never forgetting eight again. When you pick up weather at an airport, just rotate the letter under the bubble and voila! You can now focus on getting ready to land. And when you're ready to call tower, you can just reference it with a glance to your wrist. Let me paint a picture for you. You are flying with Richard Branson to a top secret space meeting in Van Nuys, California, and you are just coming over Edwards Air Force Base in your P-51. The weather at Van Nuys is being transmitted over the AT frequency, and while Richard is searching for a pen and paper to write down the current letter, you simply rotate the crown so that the current letter is under the bubble in the window. And then you look over and say, don't worry, Ricky, I got this. 
Just like you would take care of yourself by eating right and working out, I need a little proper care as well. My battery will last about two years before dying, but I would recommend you change it once a year. You'll get many more years out of my movement that way. When you do get my battery changed, I use a silver oxide battery, SR626SW. Have the watchmaker show you I am working when you pick me up. And if I don't work, make sure they really change the battery. Water resistance. I am water resistant to 50 meters or 165 feet. This does not mean I am waterproof down to that level. It just means that I can temporarily withstand pressures that would be felt at those depths. Wearing me while washing your hands or doing the dishes is okay, but taking a shower or wearing me in the hot tub I would not advise, since steam gets into places that water cannot. Waiting in a pool is okay, but extreme swimming or diving would not be a good idea. Feel free to use me in water, but if you do, get my insides checked every two years and have a watch shop check my water resistance. And if you do get water inside me, immediately stop wearing me and contact the Abingdon Company. I'll go in for a little minor outpatient surgery and everything will be okay. Keep in mind though that water damage is not covered under warranty since it's not a manufacturer's defect. Every now and then I do need a good scrub. Believe it or not, the best way to clean my leather or steel band is with mild soap and cold water. If I'm really dirty, a soft toothbrush or cotton cloth will help. Rinse me with water and pat me dry with a soft cloth. For my case in crystal, just a gentle wipe with a moist cloth is all I need. Feel free to pamper me as much as you like. And since we are on the subject of bands and wear, I want to let you know that any leather band you dress me up with will typically last six to eight months with everyday wear. Skip the first loop altogether for a longer last. Metal bands last as long as possible, but keep in mind that the pins that hold the band on may wear out or break if you handle it roughly. And last, but definitely not least, warranty. We prefer that you're wearing your watch instead of keeping it in a drawer broken, so we'll work with you. Should you need to send the watch in for repair, give us a call at 702-530-9438. A PDF version of this manual can be found on our website.